afternoon. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. We welcome you today. So thank you for your witness here in the sanctuary on the parking lot or online. We welcome you today. Very special. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I'm just saying my voice today. We love you. We appreciate you. We come to worship the Lord. And also to celebrate you today. All you are and all you do for all of us. We're grateful. Thank the Lord for his blessings. Go to the Lord again in prayer this afternoon. Pray the Lord will have this way in this service today. Pray for all of those that are able to be here this afternoon. The Lord will touch and give them health and strength and ability to be here. We want to have a special and continued prayer for Brother Mark Ballesterra, who has ministered here many times. He is in South Carolina and has uh, suffered an injury this week. He's in the hospital. Not in good condition, to be honest with you, the touch of the Lord. God is able to touch him today. Keep praying for Bishop Holmes and Lord Full Rock. He's improving. Thank the Lord for that. But keep praying for him. Pray for Bishop Cadness, who is overseer of the church in Shelbyville, Indiana. He had a stroke this week. He's a touch of the Lord. God is able. Let's pray for the eighth family of the day that the Lord be with them. Pray for all of those that. Could not be in this service today. The Lord touch and give him strength. Sister Sylvia, Sister Geraldine needs to pray right. Let's pray for her today. God is more than able. Let's pray for the shorter family from the DC's. Dad passed away uh, late yesterday. Let's pray for their family. God will give them comfort and strength. If you have another need, let's share with the Lord right now as we pray together in Jesus' name. God, we love you today. Thank you for the honor of privilege, desire, and place in our hearts to be in your house this afternoon. Thank you for your faithfulness that you're still on the throne and rest in every situation. That you're still the living in the valley of the bright and morning star. You're still a great physician, Lord. With you, nothing is impossible today. Bless and courage, strengthen your people, and touch those unable to be here. Minister is only in the end to every new God. All the glory, the honor, and praise you all richly deserve. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everyone say amen. It's good, Lord. Good hand clap and praise today. He is wonderfully worthy. Let's worship the Lord today.
Let's give the bishop a good hand as he comes tonight. Six and twenty it says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. You may not realize this, but the church of the living God is your spiritual mother today. It's not Mary because Mary is sleeping in the grave, waiting on the coming of the Lord. But God advised us to do what He says. But he said also in the process, don't forget the mother that takes care of you has got some laws that you need to abide by. And uh, when we look into the scripture, the word of God is not found in the book of Esther, but it has some of the most godly principles in all of the Bible. And I'm glad that it's part of the Bible. But I'm gonna read in Esther chapter two, Verse 15. Now when the turn of Esther, now what happened, the king was looking for a bride. And everybody was looking good and looking fine and doing fine for everybody except the king. You know what? I want to place the king today. How about you? It doesn't matter what Vogue or the magazines or bride and style says. We need to please the king. But it came her turn. She was a, a Jewish in captivity. But the Bible said, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Aleo, the uncle, uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamber, and the keeper of the women, appointed. She knew the keeper of the women knows what the king wants. And while the rest of them was having a wild Saturday night, so to speak, she said, uh-uh, I want to do what the king wants. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked on her. Listen, don't worry about the pride and style of this world. It's going to pass away. Amen. God's going to have a bride. And here's how you get in it. He's not looking for a girlfriend today. I've always doubted these women. There's a difference in a woman and a mother. He said, well, I'm not going to take my husband's name. If you're here guilty of that, I didn't know it. But if she fits, you have to wear it. There's a way that we get into the bride of Christ. And it's found. Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, the Bible said when they heard the death, burial, and resurrection preached, they said unto Peter, listen, apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38 says, and Peter said unto them, repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell you today that God's bride is going to wear his name. I believe that. Somebody said, oh, you're just making analogies. It's not there. But Revelation 21 and 1. A man that paid the price to give us the last book in the Bible. 
John the Revelator. He said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of God, from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, The whole the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. If you make preparation, it pays off. I guess a lot of you here remember that old song they used to sing, and I think the Goodman family revived it. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, night, or noon, when the bride will be reunited with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 17 says, Then we shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I was in pain when they did a wedding. This might interest some of you that are kind of looking around. This is a little walk and I get to the end of this. The bride's parents when she gets married, goes to the hotel or wherever they're going to stay after the wedding. And they go all through to make sure there's no danger or harm there. And that she's okay. And they leave. You didn't think that's what I was going to say, did you? <laughs> Thank God the Lord protects us and gave us a mother. I was in Jerusalem, which is above all, is a mother of us all. Don't let preachers offend you. Let them preach to you, because they're getting you ready to meet the king. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 11 said he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Thank God for everything that goes on in church. But thank God. For Bible preaching. I said Bible preaching. Because that's what's going to save us. God bless you this afternoon. Lighthouse Christian Academy and Friends come on this way today.
did a fantastic job of that. Love every one of them. God, forget to young people come and listen today. Lighthouse Choir, come on this way this afternoon.
basis today. God bless all of our Sunday school team, all of our kids. I would love our kids around here. Appreciate that. Hey. God bless all of them. Brother Guest bless us today. If you don't mind, as he does, we'll uh, receive our offerings at this time. Thank you so much for your faithfulness given to the cause of God. The baskets are on each side of the sanctuary today. God bless you for you.
are, are on the property. They're in the room today. My mom's here, and my mother-in-law is here, and so many special moms in the room today that have meant so much to me throughout my life. And uh, I encourage you today, if you're not in a position where you could be with your mom this Sunday, find a phone somewhere. Find some way to get in touch with your mom. We are blessed here today to have some of the greatest moms in the entirety of the world right here with us. I want you to know today that we love you, we admire you, we appreciate your sacrifice and your hard work and your dedication. The truth is, Christian moms usually have plans, and they're quite good at executing those plans. And... Uh, Executing sometimes a tough word. Don't, don't think of that as in capital punishment. Though I will tell you, my mom was way more efficient and effective with a belt than daddy ever was. Lord, he could talk the talk, but mama could walk the walk. You know, you could start, oh, you could start praying when daddy got hot. Think like Jesus would just touch his heart, you know. I praise to God, I will never do that again. Oh, and that he wore about a 36 waist then. Lord, I wouldn't want to have a whooping with his belt and I need one. Uh, but moms have plans. And they make something. Have a tremendous impact on their offspring. I was blessed uh, with, a great, uh, with a grandmother. My mom's mother who uh, some of you in the room knew, and uh, she grew up in a generation so different than the one we, we do today. Uh, my grandmother, to my knowledge, never drove a car, but she really didn't have a need to drive a car. It didn't seem like she, she had somebody to take her wherever she might need to go, and she had a good friend, who some of you know, Sister Wilma Strasen. Yeah. And you know, back when I was five years old, and they were all of 60 probably, uh, I used to hang out with him some when, when Daddy, when my papa was going to work, and uh, I remember I would go to, with him sometimes to uh, a store in North Little Rock called Cloth World. I don't know if there's many Cloth Worlds around anymore. I think they're mainly located in Asia these days. But uh, in those days, Christian moms, a lot of them, like my grandma, would go to Cloth World, and I'll never forget. You know, it seemed like an eternity that I was there. They were looking at fabrics. And finally, they would find one they really liked. And they would take it up to the front. And I will never forget that big table that was up there. And they would lay, I didn't know then it was called a bolt. But now, I think it's called a bolt of fabric. They would lay up there. And whoever was uh, running the show would start pulling that fabric. And go boom, 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 as it rolled out on the table. And then I remember they'd get out some scissors and you'd hear them go, and they would cut that fabric all the way across. And Mamma would take that home and she had something called a pattern. And she would put some effort and energy into her work. And she would create something. I think she made the first suit I ever wore. I don't remember. And probably it wouldn't look as good on me today as Brother Dakota's kerchief does in his pocket back there. But uh, Mamma made pajamas and she just made all kinds of things that was great for our family. She took some ingredients and she took some time and effort and energy to create something special that would not have existed on its own or by itself. The word zest, at least one proper meaning for that word is energy. And Christian moms seem to be full of energy. They're working. They're planning. They're taking some materials and some time, and they are in, in planting in their kids and those they come in contact with special things that will live on long after they have left this world. You don't need to stand today, but if you have your Bibles, Second Epistle, Paul the Apostle Timothy, Chapter 1, it begins by saying, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. He goes on to say, I thank God, whom I serve, 
from my forefathers with pure conscience and without ceasing, he says, I have remembrance of thee, speaking of Timothy, in my prayers night and day. And in the fifth verse of the first chapter of 2 Timothy, and he speaks of Timothy's spiritual lineage, his faith history, if you please, his, maybe his spiritual resume, you might call it. And the Apostle Paul says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned, that's not a word you hear very often today, but unfeigned really means true or faithful or consistent or real. And the apostle says, when I call to remembrance the real faith that is inside of you, he says, oh, I think about it. It was first in your grandma, Lois, and then your mother, Eunice. And the apostle Paul says, and I am persuaded it is in you or thee also. I look all over this room today and saw the kids up here singing. Those little dogs, four years old or whatever they were, up there singing while ago, and when I looked at Italy, I thought, well, there's some faith that's in her mama, Sister Taylor, that's in her grandma, Sister Ray, that's in her great-grandmother, Sister Royce, all of whom are here today, and in my mind, I first remember being in, it being in Mimi that we knew as Sister Floyd Weaver. I look all over this room today. I was praying and studying the office some earlier this morning and walked out of the office and uh, was thinking about this day. And I looked toward the front of the church and I saw Brother Reed Perez out there cleaning some windows. And I thought, well, today's Mother's Day. And his mom, for the first time, is not with him on Mother's Day. He could be at home whining or complaining or asking God, why did she have to be part of the pandemic? But that same faith that I saw in Sister Digna and his dad and Grandma Perez all those years ago is still alive and well today. Pass it on. I look at uh, Bella in Boston today. And all the other grandkids of our family. And I remember hearing stories about how my great grandmother, known as Granny Great, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the early 1900s, something like 1905 or 7, something like that. And how it has passed generation to generation to generation. And that faith is still alive in 2021. If the Lord tears is coming, my hope and prayer is that the faith that has been delivered to us by our ancestry, moms or dads, will live on. The Bible declares one of the questions of the Bible that rings in my ears so often is this. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He'll find a lot of things. You'll probably find some Republicans and some Democrats, some liberals, and some conservatives, some criminals, some politicians, some lawyers, some uh, plumbers. But when they find people of faith on the earth, I'm convinced a big reason that there will still be people of faith on the earth when the Lord comes back will be because there's some Christian moms who have sacrificed to pass it on. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 4 through 7, we heard him sing about it earlier. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. These words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Verse 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. I am privileged today to be among some Christian moms who have taken the time, the effort, and the energy to share with your kids a love for the Word of God and the house of God. Some of y'all were here, I don't know, it's probably been uh, close to 12 years ago after God first sent our kids to our house. And, uh, 
I was smoking Jordan up here one night, and uh, his mom and his grandma had been working with him a little bit on the books of the Bible, and I wanted to show him off a little bit. He weighed probably 20 pounds or 22 then, I don't know. I wouldn't want to try to, I wouldn't want to know I had to pick him up today. <laughs> but I picked him up, and I held him up to this microphone, and boy, I was so proud, you know, he was going to share what they had been showing him. And, uh, he said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, I've got to go. That's what he said. <laughs> I've seen some of your kids through the years. One of the first things you might ask a kid around here, it's a year or two old. They just start to say mom and dad and this and that and the other. You ask them a math question. How many gods are there? They'll hold up one thing. Right. That happens because Christian moms are willing to teach their kids. I'm thankful today to be among precious women, valuable women, Christian mothers. Proverbs 31 10 asks the question who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far. Everybody say far. far. Not just a little, but it's far above rubies. Now, uh, a ruby is one, but rubies is plural. That means many, or at least more than one. I read earlier today that the sunrise ruby is the most expensive one ever found. 25.59 carats. It's sold almost exactly Six years ago, May the 12th, 2015, one ruby sold for $30.42 million. One of them. Ladies, life may throw you curves. The University of Hard Knocks may beat you up. Your husband may be unfair. Your preacher may be unfair. You may feel unappreciated, but in the eyes of God, if you're living for Him, if you're serving Him, your value is higher, is far above rubies. You matter right. to God. Today we're honoring godly motherhood and a selfish and twisted world. Some of y'all, the older I get, the more I do it. I didn't used to do it. I used to think old people did this, and then I started doing it, which might mean I'm starting to get along the whole side. Anybody like to just watch? Does people watch? Now, those, those benches look far more appealing the older I get. I read a funny story recently about one of the uh, one of those older people just sat down on a bench next to somebody and was just watching the crowd. All of a sudden, somebody walked by with a great big green mohawk. Y'all know what that is? Tattoos everywhere, and big chains hanging off everywhere. And big old pair of boots on and just kind of looked a little unusual. And the old guy said, the person next to him said, I've got a question for you. Do you think that's a boy or a girl? <laughs> the response was, oh, that's a girl. She's my daughter. <laughs> the old guy said, oh, sir, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. And the response was, uh, I'm not a sir. I'm her mom, but you didn't offend me. <laughs> Let's just say Christian moms still know whether they got a son or daughter. Christian motherhood's more than having babies, but you know what you got to have them start out. God still values all life. It doesn't matter if politicians do or not. It doesn't matter if Republicans do or not, or Democrats do or not. God still places great value on all life. Psalms 22 and 10. I was cast upon thee. David said, from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. It seems like God might 
have an opinion here. Psalms 139, verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Anyone who purposely takes the life of a baby yet unborn has gone through a covering provided by God. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, God says of Jeremiah, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. If God can ordain and sanctify and know that child, it is indeed a child that should be protected and preserved. chooses that man should be loved and protected. All godly Christian mothers value the sanctity of life. I like this saying I've heard it before. But everybody here today ought to smile that your mom chose life. You live in a country where she could have done something different. I've shown this to you a time or two before. But I think it's worth repeating today. Moms, we love you. We're looking at a map of the United States of America. Something like 19 states are shaded in red. I don't have a corner in my hand, but most of you know your geography enough to know where Arkansas is. To the south of us is Louisiana. Yeah, thank you, brother. Well, I'm going to see if he knows his. <laughs> Mississippi. Got some Mississippi people here today. There you go. Killed everybody. If you if you could have the weaponry, kill everybody that lives in Arkansas today. Across the southern border, go to Louisiana, Shreveport, New Orleans, all the other regions and bios of that state to kill everybody down there. Some way or another, you got to Mississippi, and you even went as far out as JS, where my parent, my mother and father-in-law live, and you got everybody in JS, and Jackson, and Biloxi, and all the other cities in Mississippi. I could do this 19 times. If you went all the way to the top left to Oregon, you got everybody in Portland. Idaho, Montana, both of the Dakotas, if you went to Kansas City, Hutchinson and Hayes, Kansas, and all the other places. Went to Tulsa and Oklahoma City and all other cities in that state. Went to Des Moines, Iowa. Went all over Kentucky, the bluegrass country. Went to West Virginia. Went up to Maine and killed everybody there. Got everybody that lives in New Hampshire. Vermont, we killed them all. If you killed everybody in every state I just mentioned and every other one in red that I didn't, if you killed every human being that's breathing today in any of those states and all of them combined, you would still not have killed as many human beings as abortion has in this country in the last 30 years. We were right to be ticked off and upset about the thousands who died on 9-11. We were correct. But the same people who will gripe and complain about that I'm sad today for every human being that's been lost through the current pandemic. I think it's a horrible thing. I'm heartbroken over every person lost. But the highest estimates that I have seen, abortion has killed something like Amen. 70 to 1. Amen. How many times on your cable news network do you hear about all the tragedy of life lost to abortion. The reason you don't hear that is because we're suffering from a gross lack of Christian motherhood in the United States of America. Amen. Mothering is 
it's more than just birthing the kids, however. They got to get here, but they deserve our best after they get here. And I'm here mostly today to congratulate and pat Christian mothers under the sound of my voice on the back today and to encourage you and to thank you for doing everything you can to raise kids who love God, love their country, and have plans for a bright future here and beyond. Our God loves kids. Psalms 127, verse 3, love children. Are an heritage of the Lord. If you look that up, you'll find the word heritage is uh, used almost interchangeably with the word inheritance. Some of you whose parents have gone on may have got twenty or thirty dollars. I know most of you, most of you didn't get twenty or thirty thousand, but you might have got twenty or thirty dollars, or you may have. Oh, I had something special in my front yard. I thought, I thought I'd put a picture up there. I remember when my grandmother passed away, she didn't have much, but she had a few things. And me and my sister, oh, we clustered a good Christian one over a picture that was hanging on the wall in grandma's house. Not believe for the record, this was like All the work was all said and done. I went out in the front yard and I found me a rose bush that nobody else cared about. Planted that thing out in my front yard, and every year it has some of the biggest, most beautiful, brand new red roses that almost take your breath away. And a few times I've taken them out to Grandma's grave once in a while, and I, I take a picture and send it to my dad. Usually, when the first one buds every year, it says, This is compliments from Grandma Sheila. I sent a picture, a good one, a week or so ago to Vonda, and I said, How's that picture on your wall? <laughs> I'm not sure it's on the wall anymore. <laughs> God loves children. And he called that his inheritance. Mark 10, the, the uh, disciples, the preachers, the bishops, the board members, the deacons, the big shots, were there with Jesus and the kids started coming in and they started trying to stop him. Jesus saw him trying to stop the kids. And the Bible said he was not just displeased, but much displeased. Why do you think that I, you know, I, I don't think that our kids ought to be off in a room somewhere by themselves when we're having church in here. I want kids to be involved in what's going on. I'm not always going to be alive. And you're not even. I don't want them to know the move of God is just something they heard about from a grandparent that's dead and gone that we I heard they used to have church. I want our kids to learn how to have church when they're young. Everybody started up about something and I am so grateful that my boys are a lot more fired up about running the aisles at church than they are running the track to the Razorbacks. Jesus saw them forbidden the kids. He was much displeased and said, Suffer! The little children come to me and forbid them. Everybody say, Not. not. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, and he shall not enter therein. He took the kids up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Godly mothers care enough, love their kids enough to care about them. To want them to be successful in life and to be a witness. The Bible said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples because you have love one to another. And kids are often taught, and I know they are here, that they, uh, when they were young kids in school, they start learning their ABCs. And one of the things they do when they get to be, they learn the verse that says, Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. One another. Christian kindness can go a long ways and is deficient in the world in which we live today. Godly mothers care about their kids' appearance. Godly parents care about how their kids act. Godly parents care about their kids' attitudes. Godly parents care about their kids' motivations and aspirations and want them to succeed in life. 
Godly moms love their kids enough not only to care, but to share the opinions that they have. And to spend time with their kids. And teach them things that matter most. My grandmother, I mentioned her earlier, this message, one of the things I've told you before, but I think it's a, a good life lesson. I remember when I was a couple years old, she used to hold me in her recliner, 250 and a half Smoky Lane in North Little Rock, and she would hold my hand. And you might want to look at your hand if you got one handy right now. You may have this lesson and you may not, but I suspect a bunch of you do. She'd say, look at your hand. I was just learning my letters. And she would take her finger and trace it on my hand. And when, when I look at my hand, it's pretty easy to see there's an M there. Now, some of you may not have that lesson, but uh, eat some more biscuits. That might help. I don't know. <laughs> But on my end, there's an M. And Mamma would say, you know what that M stands for? And I looked at her and I said, what? She said, that M stands for money. Well, I was old enough to know what money could do. But Daddy would tell you that I was old enough to uh, tell him just write a check if you don't know what <laughs> But then Mamma turned my hand over, and that same hand that had that M, when she turned it over, that M turned into a W. She said, if you want money, you're going to have to work for money. There's a life lesson that our generation needs today. It's, it's, it's pretty sad in our world. A lot of places, a lot of us go, can't get anybody to work for them. Isn't that amazing? I think part of the reason that's happening is poor government policy, but also poor parenting. Godly moms are aware that their kids need safety. Thought of the old woman I heard in the house. Somebody broke in the window, middle of the night. She started screaming. Didn't know what to do. Didn't have a weapon or nothing. And she'd been to church a lot like this one. You know, every time the preacher got up and screamed, Acts 2.38, everybody went crazy. So she thought, well, I can make you go crazy. You're coming in, I'm just going to start screaming Acts 2.38. And that's what she did. And the uh, authorities arrived and found a man running. He said, why is it that you're running? He said, all I know is I heard a voice screaming, I've got an Acts in 2.38. <laughs> Most of you've got an eye for Max or 38 or 9 millimeter or an AR 14 or something around here in place. Because you want, you want a present help in a time of need. Probably what's more dangerous, I'm going to get on a little bit of thin ice here, but this is true. Probably what's more likely to injure my kids in the next 30 days in our house. It's not an intruder in the middle of the night. It's technology that comes through the radio, the telephone, the TV, the newspaper, whatever else. A good godly mom will protect her own from the criminal in the middle of the night or from the chat room where her kid has no business thing in the night. Godly mothers realize that food's important. I'm not talking about just calories and vegetables and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no, that matters. Clearly, our moms around here are making sure we're getting plenty of sun. But spiritual food's also important. It matters where our kids are taught about God. I'm glad that I know the Lord and I know His name. And with all due respect to Buddha, Buddha is not the name of God. With all due respect to Mohammed, to Jason, to John, to President Biden or former President Donald Trump, none of those are the name of God. His name is Jesus. God hath highly exalted him, the book said, and given him a name which is above every name. I'm glad I know 
glad I know the name of Jesus today. And I know, I know that is the name of God. And part of the reason I know that is I learned it from my mother. Godly mothers are also willing to lift up their voice and to speak out. You know, a lot of times we know things, but we don't have the gut to, guts to say things. And of course, we need the right attitude and the right spirit. But Christian moms, you need to know that when you're speaking up for what's right, you need a dad, you need a husband that'll back you up. I'm not encouraging men to be lazy or be a mouse, but sometimes we need to let our wives be involved. Any brothers want to say amen right now? It's been said once in a while, the best man for jobs, a woman. Sometimes they'll listen to mama when they won't listen to that. Let me say right now that I admire greatly the moms under the sound of my voice who are doing a tremendous job and have no dad in the home with you to help them as they should. Probably another subject for another day, but the Bible still says that a man that will not provide for his own, and that means more than sending $2 or $200 or $200 thousand dollars. Every man in the world needs to be with his kids. Book said, if you don't provide for your own, the Bible said you're worse than an infant. Now, I might not have written it that way. But it was written before I got it. That's what it says. God and others declare, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to set high goals and standards in our home. We're going to place priority where it should be. We're going to place value on the things that matter most. We're going to learn from our mistakes and do that. Christian moms yeah, are going to pass on all of these traits to their kids. Moms, you're the greatest. We love you today. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your dedication. We thank you for your example. And we want you to know that we think you are the very best. Let's give all our moms a good. several of you today, most of you are back and forth through text, and I was just reminded how blessed we are. How blessed we are. I mean, I know you know it, but do you ever just really stop and think about it more than just on today, on a special day, how blessed you are to have the kind of ladies that you have when you're surrounded, not just in your own home, but in our church family. Um, so many moms, uh, I want to say a few things about this today, and I I hope I don't cry, but if I start crying, you know that if I talk about stuff that means something to me, sometimes I cry. But I've been there. I've been in some of these situations that I'm going to talk about for just a second. But I recognize that we all, you know, don't have the kind of mom that I had. I recognize that. I also recognize that today can be kind of bittersweet for some people. Um, if you're not a mom yet, but you long to be, I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to hurt on a Mother's Day when you can't be a mom. And so if that's you today and you don't even, nobody even knows that, I, I pray for you and I feel you today. Um, if you're about to be a mom for the first time, we've got a couple of those here today, and you're a little anxious, we're praying for you. You can do it. I promise it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's going to help you through it. I promise. Um, if you've lost your child, whether that was for a miscarriage or a death, ah. I know some of that pain, and I'm praying for you today. I've texted some of you. If you have a mom that has gone on, I know you have to be missing her people today. But you have a choice. You can focus on the good, and you can focus on the memories and the lessons taught, and how you can impact your children and, and what you're going to do and impact those that are around you. 
I wrote some stuff out, but uh, I know, like I said, you may not have been blessed with the world's greatest mom. I hope you feel like that you have been, but if you haven't been, look around you. There are wonderful ladies in this room. Find one. Find someone that can be a mentor to you or can teach you things. There, the Bible still talks about that the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. And I don't think I'm old yet, but I have lived long enough, I have been a mom long enough that I feel like that I'm trying to help some of the younger moms. And I'm so thankful for the, the moms that are a little bit further down the road than me that I can look to for advice and that I can listen to and I can find out things from them. Um, but if you wasn't blessed to have the kind of mom I had, I'm very sorry for you. Um, I didn't think I was going to be with my mom. But I, I, sometimes I, I not whine, but sometimes we'll, we'll kind of both cry a little bit on the phone and go, oh, okay, we can't be together this year, or we can't be together, and she'll say, oh, you just it. <laughs> and I did, and I'm so grateful, but that don't mean to be on my server. And um, so this year, I didn't think we were going to be together, and we were in here yesterday working, and so we were tying ribbons and doing bows and all that kind of stuff, and all of a sudden I heard a voice, it wasn't my mom, but I heard a voice, I heard my dad singing, coming in that door right there, and I jerked my head around, and it scared me at first, I was like, that voice doesn't belong, you know, right here, and when I turned around, they were both of them walking in the, in the door, and that, that meant so much, that, that scared me enough to drive that far, to make that happen, and all of the wonderful things that she's taught me to make me who I am today, oh, mom, thank you for all the all the wonderful things that she's taught me, all the things that she's given me and provided for me. But I can honestly say, and I hope you feel this way too, that it's not just in the glorious moments of motherhood, which there are many, there's so many joyous occasions, but it's not just in the, the joyous moments where I learned the most. To be honest, I learned the most in the moments of heartache and in pain when I've seen her in the depths of humility leaning on our Savior and depending and developing her faith. That showed me that we have the promise of hope and of forgiveness and for better tomorrows. It's been the moments of her greatest sacrifice when I've learned that what true, unconditional love really means. It's been through her example, more than eloquent words that she might write or, or speak, that has taught me one of life's greatest lessons, lessons that I try to teach my kids and I hope that they teach their kids as well. Mom, thanks for helping me discover not just the mom that I want to be, but the woman that I wanted to be as well. Um, how many of you moms also work? We all work. <laughs> it is a full-time job to be a mom, I'm just telling you. But how many of you also work outside the home? That's a lot of effort, too. And sometimes we think of, you know, we've got to have a resume, and we've got to have all this stuff lined out. But the greatest thing you could ever have on your resume is being a mom, if that's your calling in life. Somebody, sometimes that's not your calling, but it doesn't matter what we have in this world, doesn't matter all the things that we can do, all the things we can accomplish. I love being a career person and having a career and being, feeling like that I can, you know, quote, contribute to corporate society. That's, that's interesting and it's fun. And it's very self, you know, fulfilling, but there is nothing, nothing as fulfilling as watching the children that God gave me pray worshiping, singing in the anointing, writing songs, being kind to others, those kind of things is much, they're much more fulfilling than anything that I can do in the corporate world. So if you're a, a young girl and you're dreaming of quote, having it all, you can, you can do anything that you feel you want to do, but just know that if God blesses you to have children, whether that's naturally or not, I love, I love, and obviously I believe this from the depth of my soul, but family is not just the blood that flows in your veins. It is who loves you and who chooses to be there for you. And I believe that with all of my heart. I don't want to embarrass her, but I will say this. And, and, and I don't mean to ramble, but as, just be a little sensitive. Does that make sense? Just be a little sensitive about some situations. We've got a precious family here that's got a new family member that, that they're helping with. I know you don't maybe know what they're going through. Pray for them. Pray for them. I promise you they need it. They need it. But when Hannah was real small, someone walked up to me and right in front of her and said, Does she know who your do you know who your real mama is? 
and that stuck me like a knife. But I promise you, Mama Tiger came out, and you know what I said? I said, of course she does, me. Because a real mama is who shows up. A real mama who loves you. A real mama who teaches you about Jesus. A real mama is someone who will discipline you and correct you and show you what to do. I'm so thankful for the real mamas that are all over this building. I'm thankful for you today. We've got, uh, I know you said you've been around here for a long time. We used to have all the classes come up and they all said something in person. It was so cute. But so many of them were shy and they were just happy to say, happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. So a few years ago, we tried to start doing it by video and to me it's much better because you get to see their personalities and hear things that they say. So, Brother Matthew, can you play that video for us? And girls. Mommy. Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Say, I love you. I love you. Why do you love Mama? Huh? Water. Oh, because I let you play in the water? Uh-huh. Okay. Happy birthday, Mommy. We love you. You, you can say it. Happy, uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Say, Yay. love you. I love you, mm -hmm. Mom. I love my mom because she takes me to the store. I love my mom because she makes my, she got me a monster 5K. It was blue. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. And how my mother is very nicely. She let, uh, sometimes she lets us play in the water slide. And every day she is so nice. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she texts me in that bedtime. I love my mom because she gets me ice cream at Sonic. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mama, because you always are happy. Love you. Love you. I love my mom because she cares for me and loves me no matter what. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you, Mom. Thank you for cooking the food for me. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she makes me smile. She loves me. She makes me food. She lets me go outside when I want to. And Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mama. Thankful for my mom because she loves me. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love my mom because she cares for me when I'm hurt. I love my mom because she has good meatballs. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Peace out. Love y'all. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a great day. I love you, Mom. I hope you have a great day at work today. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. I love you, Mom. You're a great working person. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a great day. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for all that you've done. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope your day is great. Happy Mother's Day, I love you, Mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, sister. We love you, sister. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you, Mom. Why I love my mom is because she's the sweetest thing that ever happened to me and my family. She cooks the best. She's the sweetest person I've ever met, and she also is a very hard worker and a good example of a pastor's wife. Love you, Mom. I love my mom because she takes care of me when I'm sick and likes me for who I am. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Mom, I love you because you are you, and there is no one else like you. Happy Mother's Day to you and to everyone else. My mother is the best at everything. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I love my mom because she's a caring, hardworking person and is a heart after God. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for everything you do for me and love me like your own. You're the best mom ever. 
Hey mama, I just wanted to tell you Happy Mother's Day and I love you so much. All the times that you've prayed with me, and all the times you've, all those talks that we've had together, I'm so happy to call you my mom and you're an awesome pastor's wife. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. I love my Nana because she's super funny, super nice, an amazing person in general, just overall. And um, Happy Mother's Day. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. I want to wish a Happy Mother's Day to my wonderful mom and wonderful grandma. I hope you all have an amazing day. I love you all so much, and I'm so thankful for everything you all do. And Happy Mother's Day. I love my aunt because she cares for me. She loves me, and most of all, because she cooks for me. No, I'm joking. But I just I just literally love her. I don't know what I would do without her. She is a God-given gift on this earth. I'm so happy and, you know, happy Mother's Day. I love you. Thank you for all that you've done for me. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. I love my mom because she takes care of me when I'm sick. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Mom, over the past few weeks, I've been thinking about how much you really mean to me and how much you've really helped me over the past couple of years through tough times. I really love you, and I appreciate everything you've done for me, all the efforts you've made to help me. Happy Mother's Day.
cookies. Wow. Those got cookies are a whole lot better than flowers. <laughs> Oh, will all the kids stand? Can you all stand, please, and come up here and get a pack of cookies and a little gift? Make sure all moms, grandmas, everybody gets one, please. I was given instructions to come up here and say a few words, so um, I feel mostly inadequate to say uh, what could be said or what should be said. But uh, I feel like God's blessed us with some of the best mothers in the world here today. And uh, two of those uh, don't get the recognition they deserve, uh, in my opinion. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't agree, you have a right to be wrong, so that's okay. Um, but we have a small token of our appreciation for all that they do for us. They're going to get the gifts. So I won't try to uh, come up with all the words uh, that I could say to describe them, but I was thinking earlier, uh, one thing that comes to mind when I think of Sister Shield, Sister Violet, is a uh, leader. Sometimes uh, it's obvious, it's plain to see the way that they're impacting our lives and leading by example. And other times we may not see it as much as we feel it. Uh, just a pat on the back or a, a, a text saying encouraging words. I'm sure that's happened to everybody here. I know it's happened to me and my family. Um, I know I can speak for myself that my life has been greatly impacted by these two ladies and their work that they do and want them to know that we're grateful for everything they do for us. Happy Mother's Day and we love you. Say again today a special thank you to all of our visitors. We're so glad that you came today. Those were in the parking lot or online here in the sanctuary. We're honored to have you and thank you so much for coming. Once again, let's give all of our moms a good hand of recognition. We love you. Appreciate you. Happy Mother's Day. There are some additional guests in the front. If you're going to be with your mom today and could not be in this service, or if you're going to be with a special mom, feel free to take the token of our love and appreciation as well. We thank you again for being here.